Hematology encompasses both research and patient care, turning discoveries in the lab into potentially life-saving treatments. The genetics and the molecular biology and hematology are flying ahead very, very quickly. We've really been able to identify at a molecular level what goes wrong. And once you can identify what goes wrong, then you can start to try and figure out, how do I fix it? It's early morning, and Dr. Stephanie Jeske is beginning her day at New York Presbyterian Hospital Weill Cornell Medical Center. After four years of medical school and a three-year residency in internal medicine, Dr. Jeske has just begun her three-year fellowship in hematology. We ran through my hematology knowledge in about the first 30 minutes on my first day. Her cell counts this morning, she has a white count of 1.2. What do we see with thalidomide? Side effects. Well, there's some bone marrow suppression. The pill is a little tricky. There's just a ton of stuff to learn. And just to think, is my brain going to retain it all? And hopefully it is, because my patients in the future depend on that. It, almost immediately, you can repeat the level in 30 minutes. It's definitely not a comfortable place. It's very uncomfortable because you do a lot of things that you just don't feel adequately knowledgeable about yet. And so that's why Dr. Hempstead is here, which is my net. So shall we just run the list from the top to the bottom? Sounds great. OK, B. Dr. Barbara Hempstead is a professor of medicine and co-chief of the hematology oncology department. To two, he's taking little baby steps, but I can't prove it. Fellows like Dr. Jeske, younger residents and medical students, learn at her side. Dr. Hempstead is on the consult service, a team of blood specialists brought in to confer on cases that have other physicians stumped. So, one of our most complicated patients, JD. I think he's about the sickest individual on our service right now. This is a young gentleman, 26 years old, found to have low blood counts, low white count, low red count, and a low platelet count. We don't have a diagnosis, but that's part of hematology. <laughs> like many blood disorders, it seemed to strike suddenly and mysteriously. I basically was just stopping by to get a set of uh, blood test results. I was going to take my girlfriend to the movies. The next thing the doctor said, I couldn't leave. I'm staying in for a couple of days. And well, it's been 11 days now. So here we go. But in fact, was found to have uh, rip roaring lupus to the point where he's now dependent on dialysis. We were asked to reconsult because his platelet count has continued to fall in this, in, you know, during this entire time frame, which is really out of character with classical lupus. Lupus is a disorder where the person's own immune system produces antibodies against itself. An estimated two million Americans have a form of lupus. To help Jose recover from the debilitating effects of lupus, he is treated with dialysis for his kidney failure. At the same time, he undergoes a treatment called plasmapheresis. The machine separates Jose's plasma from his blood cells. Then, plasma from healthy donors is infused back into his body. Hi, Jose. How you doing today? I'm good. Good. We brought the whole team by. We're all here. Feeling okay? Yeah. You see this young 26-year-old guy laying in a hospital bed, and it just feels it feels very wrong, and you can see how sick he is, and it's very unsettling, I think, for anybody to see that. You know, just trying to get an understanding of that. This isn't the way his life was supposed to be. Deeper? To get Jose's life back on track, the hematology team needs to know more. And uh, how long will it take to get results from this? There you go, perfect. How long it will it take? About 10 minutes once we do the smear. Okay. Okay, here's the slime. Okay, great, let's see what it shows. He still has a lot of schistocytes. So what's that indicative of? TTP. TTP stands for thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, an extremely complex and dangerous disease. Before therapy was developed, 90% of TTP patients died. So let's look at his platelets, because that's really the ultimate readout of how active his disease is. 
Jose's blood smear tells the story. To clot properly, platelets stick to the wall of an injured blood vessel. But Jose's immune system has created an antibody, blocking one of the enzymes that helps the platelets to clot. So instead of sticking to the wall of the blood vessels, Jose's platelets now clump together, creating tiny clots throughout his body. And oxygen-carrying red blood cells are getting sheared in the process, causing severe anemia. It's a devastating and before there was adequate treatment, frequently fatal disease. These are typically healthy young people who all of a sudden get dramatically ill. Just take some deep breaths in out through your mouth, Catherine. Dr. David Good. Ginsburg yeah. is a practicing yeah. physician. Stomach. Sit back up there. He's right. been researching the clotting yeah. system for the past 25 years. Run some plasma Dr. Ginsburg and his team at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor discovered the crucial enzyme being blocked in TTP. It's called Adam TS13. Platelets coexist with many clotting factors. One is called von Willebrand factor, and it catches the platelets, helping them to clot. Imagine tennis balls caught on strands of flypaper. To keep the platelets from clumping together too much, Adam TS13 cuts through the von Willebrand factor and allows the platelets to continue moving. Inhibiting Adam TS13 allows dangerous blood clotting throughout the body and causes TTP. We've learned a whole new part of the way blood clotting is controlled that we didn't even know existed. And it's opened up whole new ideas of how we can treat TTP, but also how we might treat other blood clotting diseases. There's something incredibly exciting and thrilling about that, that you've got this puzzle nature's given you and you've been able to figure out, even if it's a little teeny part of it, you've been able to figure that out, and that's tremendously gratifying. You did a really great job. Thanks. Okay. Not a lot of physicians get to figure out the puzzle. We get the whole gamut. We get the mystery cases where you don't really know what's going on and you need somebody to figure it out, and that's really why hematology is so interesting. It's very satisfying to be able to come in, pull pieces of the puzzle together, look at blood under a microscope, and say, this is what's going on. Finally, Jose's tests show a dramatic improvement. You heard the good news over the weekend about your platelets. Yes. It's really impressive. That's great. I think that all the treatment finally kicked in. Okay. I'm hoping it just keeps going. It really the crisis resolved for now. Jose will soon be released from the hospital. Jose will remain in Dr. Jeske's care in a clinic run by hematology fellows and overseen by attending hematologists. I crashed hard. I think he and I have a special bond, and it's going to be my goal to keep him well as long as we can, and when we stumble, get him well again. You need anything from us, you give us a call, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're looking good. Right, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you later, okay? All right. Bye-bye.